Okay, this is a quick look at the Roll Saga baseball game that I received over the weekend. And I just wanted to give everybody a quick look at the components. Um, right now, I have uh, Matt Waiters up at the plate to face Jake Arietta. Um, I've had both batters just in their dugout. I'll go ahead and put the players out in the field for right now to kind of show you how that works. Um, I'm really impressed with the components of the game. Um, the players' uh, cards are a little small, um, and they're just um, not even, uh, I don't know, just regular card stock. Um, but they, they serve their purpose, and they do what they need to do. Addison's at second base in 2015. Starling Castro is at shortstop. I don't even claim to know the rules yet, um, I gotta tell you, but I do know I have learned enough to be able to play. Um, so we have Jake Arrieta pitching for the Cubs. These are my own dice, uh, with the exception of the Roll Saga baseball uh, indicator that shows where the ball went when you um, do not roll a 10 or higher. Um, when you roll a 10 or higher, the pitch goes based on the pitch card that you chose. And these are the very nice quality pitching cards that come with the game. This is the repertoire of Jake Arrieta. He has, it's all listed um, right here on his card. He has a curveball. He has a slider change up a fastball and a sinker and I've had to develop a, a quick um, solitaire system and I'll just kind of run through how I did it so I have I actually ordered a second deck of the pitching cards so I had a one full deck for Jake Arietta to pull out his repertoire of pitches and for the other team I have another deck and these are the pitches for uh, Kevin Gosman who's pitching in relief of Chris Tillman because um, the O's are down five to nothing right now. So you can see we have Matt Weeders at the plate. And like I said, I've had to develop a quick solitaire system. Um, but it looks like it'd be a pretty solid two player game. Um, just to show you kind of run through how what I do know and how it works. I just know the very basics. There's so many rules I don't know. The reason being that the uh, rules are very in-depth. Um, this is the very nice rule book. You can see um, it's really nice quality. Um, and it's it's got a nice index in the back. It's about 140-something pages. Um, it's very informative and methodical. Um, so you can kind of just cut through it, and that's what I did to kind of learn the basics. There's so much to learn, um, and that's kind of nice. Now that is the core uh, rule book. The one that comes with the starter set um, that they're selling now is this one, and it's just uh, it's still nice. It's just a more abbreviated, smaller one, and that's the one where they use uh, simulation play. Simulation play uses uh, more of the uh, numbers along the bottom um, after you determine if there's a hit or not. They have chances for hits based on rolls. I've been trying to play the, uh, the master level core set. That's why I ordered that core rule book special. Paid extra for that. I think it's 20 bucks, 15 or 20, something like that. So just do a quick run through. Uh, like I said, I had to develop my own kind of solitaire system. Um, sort of the lighting's not real good. So I've got my own dice here. It comes with its own dice, but I, I wanted to use the 12 millimeter dice. So basically, my solitaire system is first you have to determine, um, and like I said, for two player system, it would probably be really good where you want the pitch to be targeted and that's what the batter sees initially is where you're going to target it so my solitaire system i've numbered the blocks here one through twelve 
And so we'll roll the dice and we can see that it is a four. So right here, one, two, three, four, that's where the target is. Then I've used a decider die and I'm going to use the same two die. And we have a six, three, and a dot indicating that the batter will swing. And the six, three is added to the plus four for Jake Arietta for his pitcher rating. So the three, uh, the nine on the die and the four makes 13. So a 10 or higher means you go to his pitch card. And so I just go through these randomly and I flip it over and you would pick the pitch if you're playing two player. So we'll just flip this over and you can see it's a fastball and there is no movement. It stays in the same block because sometimes the pitch like a curveball will be two or three down and one to the right for a right hand pitcher. So this one stays on the block and it's uh, going to be right there in the strike zone and because I rolled the dot the batter is going to swing. Now when the batter decides to swing and this is my my system I came up with to indicate in solitaire play that he's going to swing but in two player game you decide if you're going to swing or not. So to swing I have to roll these two die, and I have to beat what he rolled, which is a 9 plus his 4, 13. I get to add my batter rating for Matt Wieters is a 4, you can see it, and I get to add it to this, which makes 9, and I did not beat the pitchers, so I get a strike. And there were already two strikes on Matt Weeders, so he strikes out. So that's a strikeout for Matt Weeders. And that's the end of that inning. So that was just a quick run through of how it works. Um, just uh, real quick, we'll run through another roll to see what happens with another fake at bat for Matt Weeders. So if I roll this I get a 4 that means that will be the target area and I'll roll these again and it's a 7 and a blank so 7 a 6 6 plus a 4 for Jake area that makes a 10 now when you make 10 exactly you have to um, show your pitchers card and the batter can then decide if he wants to swing if you get over 10 um, he doesn't get to see it before he decides. So anyway, so here's the pitch. Again, it's another fastball, so it stays there. The batter's going to swing. So the batter has to be a 6 plus 4, has to beat a 10. And he's got a 5, and his plus 4 is a 9, so that would be another strike. If he was to get a 6 plus 4, that's a 10, that's a tie, that's a foul ball, two strikes. Roll again, he got a 7 this time. So a 7 plus his 4 is an 11, that means he's beat the pitcher roll, and so that's a base hit, or that's a hit. So now I'm going to roll all these die. And that's, these two indicate the 4 and the 1. The 4 indicates that it's a high line drive. The one indicates that it went 50 feet, and you always add the length of the batter power rating, which for him is 20, so 70 foot. And these two indicate the direction. 44 for a left-handed batter is going to be right here. And a four indicates a high line drive, but it's not very far, it's only 70 feet. So it's basically right to Starlin Castro. So all Starlin needs to do is get a 7 to field it properly. And he's already got a 5 for his glove. So we only need to roll basically snake eyes. And he's fielded it properly. And that's an out. Line drive to Starlin Castro. So that's a quick look at the roll side components and game. Like I said, I don't claim to know the rules yet, but... That's what you get with it. Um, I've got Kansas City broken out and Chicago Cubs and Baltimore. A couple teams sitting there. And the 
this is the box it came in, the starter box. And these are the teams. Each team is on a page. This happens to be Boston. And you just punch them out and use the stands. And you've got the coaches and the base coaches and the manager. And like I said, I put them up here. The three that I've broken out, you can put rubber bands around them real lightly or put them in the bags that are provided, you know, clear plastic bags. All right. That's Roll Saga Baseball for now. I, I think it's really good for two-player, and we'll see how it goes uh, when I get to play it against a friend and against the wife, and I'll let you know how that goes.